What's cooking everybody, Dave Mays here with Kino Tika and today we're reviewing the new Raikou GR3, the ultimate mom cam. Train! There's a train coming. So the Raikou GR has been around for a really long time. It started out with the 35 millimeter Raikou GR1 and it kind of gathered a cult following for being so small, lightweight, and super versatile. The digital versions of the GR over the last couple years have become kind of the standard for street photographers. So when Raikou announced the GR3 at Photokina, we were super stoked to see it in person and talk to the super epic hair guy about it. It's been over six months since Photokina and Raikou GR3 is finally here. Quick shout out to b &H Photo who provided this Raikou GR for our review. This camera is really like a wolf in sheep's clothing because the specs on this camera are that of a really high-end mirrorless camera, but it looks like a mom camera, which is super cool. I'm just gonna read some of the specs off for you so that you know exactly what's packed inside this little guy. There's a 24.2 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor inside of this camera, which is an upgrade from the previous model. We've also got a brand new processor, the GR Engine 6, with a newly updated 28 millimeter equivalent F2.8 aperture lens. They've also included three axis stabilization. It's not five axis, which is what we're used to on like a GH5, for example. So it's nowhere near as good as an Olympus or Panasonic camera, but three axis image stabilization is a welcome addition on a stills camera of this size. They've also included a three inch touch display on the back here, which is a great way to select your focus points when you're trying to nail a shot. This camera can record full HD at 60 frames per second, but it's only in a program auto mode and the video quality is really not very good. This camera can shoot 1080p at 60 frames per second, but there's no 4K and there's no manual mode when you're shooting videos. So I really would stay away from the video settings on this camera. So I was really hoping that this camera would have really good autofocus, really decent video, and even a decent mic. As you can see, the focus kind of goes all over the place. There's a little bit of rolling shutter and the audio kind of sucks. So unfortunately this camera is not really a video camera. I think your phone would give you better footage than this. And it's also got a USB-C port, which is super convenient when you're charging or trying to dump your pictures onto your computer. And last but not least, a 35 millimeter and a 50 millimeter equivalent crop mode built into this camera. So you don't have to change lenses because you actually can't. There's only one lens. Although specs are super powerful and people tout this camera as being one of the best street photography cameras out there. So I say, let's put this thing to the test. But first, a word from our sponsor today, Squarespace. Hey, I'd like to interrupt this program with a brief word from our sponsor today, Squarespace. By the way, this is one of those mugs that like changes colors when you put stuff in it. Watch this. <laughs> cool, I'm just gonna let that change as I do my ad read for Squarespace, our sponsor today. If you're in need of a website, then make sure to check out squarespace.com. I am in the process of building my own personal website and I will be doing it through Squarespace. It's one of the best options out there. Definitely check out Squarespace if you're in need of a domain or website. And if you do decide to check Squarespace out, then click the link below and you'll save 10% on your first purchase. Purchase. Thanks again Squarespace for making this video possible. Ah, isn't that cool? By the way, Brock Gill is one of my good friends. So let's first talk about focus on the Raikou GR3. Now they're using a hybrid AF system and they told me when I was at Photokina that that includes phase detect. But to be completely honest, the autofocus system on here is not super reliable all around. I think if you're shooting in a daylight scenario like this, you're pretty safe and you're gonna be able to nail your focus most of the time. There's also face tracking, which seems to be working rather decently. But to be completely honest, when I was using this around NAB, I had a lot of problems with this camera focusing on the subject that I wanted. However, as soon as I went into the touch mode on the back of the screen and I selected a single autofocus point and I pulled the focus down, it usually would nail it in that scenario. Thankfully, however, on the Ryko GR3, we have the same snap focus mode that was in the previous version. Essentially, with the snap focus mode, you can set a distance on the camera and the focus is just locked at that distance. So for me, I have it set to one meter focus mode, which is about from here to where the camera is right now that's filming me. And I basically can just trust that the camera is gonna nail that picture because it's not having to do any autofocus at all. It's just snapping to that predetermined 
distance. I've actually mapped one of the function buttons to be the snap focus mode. So if I'm having trouble with the autofocus, I just push that button and then boom, I know one meter away from me, everything's gonna be in focus. In addition to all these different focus modes, we also have a macro focusing mode on this camera and it works really well. If you wanna take pictures of bumblebees, flowers, or candy bars, this is a great camera for that. Having the versatility of a macro mode on a camera of this size with great bokeh and depth of field is again, just a really nice handy thing to have in your pocket. So let's talk about color science, picture profiles, and overall image quality. This thing is really impressive. I can't believe the dynamic range that I'm getting out of this. The raw files are nice and crunchy. We have plenty of range in the highlights and shadows, and the skin tones look really natural in the normal picture profile mode. We also get some really nice black and white filters as well if you just wanna shoot JPEG. The high crunchy black and white filter is super artsy fartsy and really kind of popular with the street shooters but I personally just like shooting raw and editing these on my phone. I think this camera's Wi-Fi function alone is one of the best selling features of this camera, which segues nicely into the mobile phone app. Now, Raikou does make their own app, but it's kind of crappy and it doesn't work very reliably. Surprisingly, on the iPhone, there's some person that made a third-party app called the GR app. I've never used a mobile phone app for any camera that has been so reliable and so quick to connect than this GR app. This is actually an app made by a real user of GR cameras. Now, GR3 isn't fully supported yet, so I'm not able to actually view my image on the app. I'm not able to like change my focus and stuff. The developer has said that he's working on that and we'll hopefully see that soon. You can do that on the GR2, so we know that hopefully it'll happen with the GR3. One of my favorite things about the Raikou GR is the handling of this camera. Because the Raikou GR has a retractable lens that covers the lens element, it's so easy to just pop this into your pocket. Raikou designed this camera to be a one-handed operation tool that means that when I pull it out of my pocket, I can push this button, it's in the perfect spot, the on button. It turns on and boom, I'm taking pictures instantly. There's a little joystick here with a nice lip that allows you to change your exposure compensation, a dial on top here that can give you full manual control, aperture priority, or what I typically shoot in on this camera, which is program auto. What did you say? And then there's an additional dial on the front here that you can set for different things as well. On the back, we've got our macro button, ISO button, white balance, and the mode that gives you continuous shooting or the timer. And it's all really accessible on this little wheel dial here, which can also rotate and it's really, it's really nice. We've also got an FN button here right by your thumb, which can be configured to do anything you want. I have it set to be the autofocus lock button. I think overall the button layout is really well designed and the fact that we also have a three inch touch screen on the back that works really reliably and can select our focus points is just super easy to use and I find it a joy to hold and to take pictures with. Unfortunately Raikou did remove the built-in flash that the GR2 had. I've heard a lot of people say that they miss that built-in flash. Of course a built-in flash is never going to look that great but this camera kind of lends itself to that hipster flash sexy like street photography look. You know what I'm talking about? I'll put some pictures up. That's what I'm talking about. And unfortunately you can't do that anymore with this. You're going to have to put an actual flash on the camera, making it a little bit more bulky. A handy little feature with the GR3 is the fact that it has a built-in automatic ND filter inside of the sensor. Having that built-in ND filter is really handy because the fastest shutter speed you can do on this camera is unfortunately only 1 2500th of a second. That's how you say it, right? There's also some cool little accessories that you can get for this camera. This little ring here comes off and it allows you to put a wide angle adapter on this camera. So if you need that extra wide angle for those selfie shots or cityscapes, then get the wide angle adapter. But for me, 28 millimeters is plenty wide enough for most cases, and some people would even say it's too wide. Another accessory that you can get from GR is this little viewfinder that goes on top of the display. It's not an EVF in any way. It's actually just a piece of glass that simulates a 28 millimeter focal length. So you can actually look through that little viewfinder and get a rough estimate of what the camera is taking. It might be good for you if you wanna be a little bit more low key instead of holding the camera out. If you're shooting in bright sunlight and you can't see the screen, it can come in handy. But honestly, I think it's a little overkill and it's way overpriced. Also the three axis stabilization on this camera may be a really big selling point to you because you're like, ooh, Ibis on a tiny little camera. But I hate to burst your bubble. The stabilization really is nothing to write home about. 
The stabilization is good enough to kind of shoot at a decently low shutter speed of like 1 30th of a second, but this is nowhere near what you're used to with a traditional IBIS from Panasonic, Olympus, or even Sony. I think overall, this camera is such a nice addition to your phone. Having a dedicated stills camera instead of your phone can actually make you think a little bit more about your photos. Not to mention you get a larger sensor size with a shallow depth of field, giving you that nice bokeh that you want, great dynamic range, the raw files just perform so great. But is this thing worth $900? I think it really comes down to you and what you actually value and what you actually need. For a street photographer or a professional photographer who needs a backup camera or a camera that is super discreet, getting photos that look way better than any point and shoot that would look like this, then yes, it's totally worth $900 and you should buy it in a heartbeat if that's you. Also, if you're an online creator and you want a camera that can get killer thumbnails for YouTube or amazing Instagram photos, throwing this in your pocket is super easy to do and having a dedicated tool for those moments is really valuable. But there's a lot of other cameras in this price point that can do a lot more. For example, the RX100 5 from Sony is roughly the same price with a 1.8 aperture on the wide end. And even though the sensor is smaller, the depth of field is still there with that camera. You also get a flip up selfie screen so you can actually see yourself and use it as a real video camera. The camera can shoot 4K, it's got amazing autofocus, and it has all the picture profiles that you love from Sony. Not to mention that camera can do crazy slow motion video and it has a built-in EVF. Also on top of all that, the RX100 actually has a zoom range from 24 millimeters to 70 millimeters. And it's only 2.8 on the tight end. So you actually have a great aperture range on that lens. This camera only has one lens and it's stuck at f2.8, 28 millimeters f2.8 lens on an APS-C sensor. So that's just it. The Ryko GR3 is designed for people who are fans of the GR system and want a newer sensor, newer lens, newer body. And it's also for people who actually need professional stills in their pocket. I would definitely choose this over an RX100 for photography only. I think that the images on this look way better than what the RX100 can do for still photography. But for video shooters and hybrid shooters, and even people who just want an everyday camera to take pictures of their kids and their soccer games, this is really not giving you the best bang for buck. What do you guys think of the Ryko GR3? Does it live up to the hype or is it a little overrated? Leave us a three paragraph essay and let us know what you think below. Also, we'd like to again thank B&H Photo for providing the Ryko GR3 for this review. If you're interested in buying the Ryko GR3, we've provided a link in the description below. We would really appreciate it if you use that link. I've been buying video and photo equipment from B&H for literally 10 years now, and they have been the most reliable company ever. I highly recommend you buy your products from B&H Photo. They're an amazing company to work with. Also, I'd like to shout out Squarespace again. If you're interested in starting a website, then use our code Kino at Squarespace. We provide a link in the description below for that as well. Once again, I'm Dave Mays. This camera looks like your mom should be using it. See you next time.